When I was growing up in the 1980s and 90s, American cars weren't especially cool. The chromed out land yachts of the 60s and 70s were mostly scrap, and the contemporary cars were being crushed by the Japanese. So when Chrysler first showed the outlandishly bold design of the new 300 in the mid-2000s, I was just as taken with it as the rest of the country. How does it look? Chrysler redesigned the 300 just last year, but it's still about as American a design as you'll find. The front fascia features a bold grille and a strong jaw. The body lines are crisp and square and help give the car a really powerful stance. The all-wheel drive tester rides higher than I'd like, but the trade-off is worth it if you live in the icy tundra like I do. How's the storage? There's a tremendous amount of room in the trunk for groceries, golf bags, or even the occasional dead body. Cup holder and cubby space in the front is actually quite generous. But the shallow, skinny dish next to the gear lever is not a good place to store your smartphone, even if your smartphone is smaller than a massive iPhone 6 Plus or Galaxy Note. Is it roomy? In a comparative sense, the 300 is fractionally smaller in the front seats than other full-size sedans like the Chevy Impala and the Kia Cadenza. However, the Chrysler makes more room in the back seats than the Chevy or the Kia. Even though the 300 rear seats measure out bigger than most of its competition, it's still tough for someone as big as me to sit behind myself, as it were. At six foot, five inches tall, the optional dual pane sunroof cuts into precious headroom for me, and maneuvering is tight. Normal sized humans will be fine. Is it well equipped? I'm driving the limited trim level of the all wheel drive 300, pretty much the base car for this drive line. Even still, the car is wearing 19-inch wheels over the standard 17s, which really helps the stance. If you bought a 300 Limited with no other options, you'd still get leather trim seats and steering wheel, Chrysler's excellent Uconnect infotainment system with a big 8.4-inch display, a backup camera, keyless start, heated seats, and more. How's the infotainment system? I think Uconnect is one of the better systems out there today, honestly. The graphics are bright and easy to understand, the system is logical to use and well laid out, and the processor is fast so there isn't much lag. This model has the basic six speaker stereo system, but it gets quite loud without much distortion, so rocking out shouldn't be an issue. Is it a good daily driver? After the redesign, the 300 is probably a better daily driver than it's ever been before, and it was pretty good to start with. It's a comfortable cruiser, it's got plenty of power, 292 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque out of a 3.6 liter V6 engine, which means that you can get up to speed on the highway and pretty much do whatever you want. The seats are really comfortable, the seating position is upright, visibility is good, so whether you're on kind of a B road like this or driving around in town in traffic, uh, it's a really easy car to maneuver and sort of handle. You just have to be careful because it is long and you need to know where those edges are. Now, the all-wheel drive version that I have here might not be necessary for a lot of people in the country, but out here in Michigan and elsewhere in the snow belt, it really comes in handy. If you enter low grip situations, it's good to have that sort of backup traction, uh, the ability to push through a little bit more snow, and generally feel more secure when you're on the road in inclement weather. Is it fun to drive? The truth is, if you want a fun to drive Chrysler 300, you need to get one with a Hemi V8 and with the rear wheels driven only. This car doesn't do a whole lot to inspire you to drive on your favorite back road, for instance. There's nothing in the steering or the suspension or the brakes that speaks to a performance car nature. How's the fuel economy? The EPA reckons you'll get about 27 miles per gallon on the highway with this V6 all-wheel drive configuration, and 18 in the city. That's just slightly less than the front drive competitors from Kia, Hyundai, and Chevy, but it's one mile per gallon better than the all-wheel drive Ford Taurus. How much is it? The basic version of this car, with all-wheel drive, mind you, starts at about $35,000. Our tester is $38,500 with one $3,000 options package. That adds GPS, voice command, and Bluetooth, a huge dual-pane sunroof, LED fog lamps, and something I love in weather like this, remote start. What are the negatives? Unless you really need a monumentally huge back seat and trunk, this is just kind of hard to justify versus a mid-size sedan. For instance, for this kind of money, you could find a top-of-the-line Fusion or Chrysler 200, both with all-wheel drive. And it can be kind of a pain to park this big boy, too. Who should buy it? 
I think the Chrysler 300 could scratch the itch for a lot of conventional shoppers that might want to stand out from the crowd. I also think that with all-wheel drive as an option, it's really opened up the field to people who live in snowy weather states like I do. But certainly, anybody that wants something that looks and feels especially American will want to consider this.